What's up, guys, and welcome to episode 14 of The Beat on the Street. I'm Michael Anthony of PopArtApp.com, and I have a lot of awesome music videos on today's show. Also, later on, I have the first Let's Get to Know video interview with Demetra of Neutron Soltis. Also, the first merch table segment with Corinne Zoe Lee, and also an interview with Cat Temper. Let's get the show started with the new video from Candy Apple Blue, Gray Stars, and Answer 42.
Take some time to thank all of you for checking out the show. Also, a big shout out to Retro Reverb Records and Retro Synth for supporting my show and their YouTube channels. Don't forget to subscribe, like, and comment on this video no matter where you're watching it from. If you have seen my website before, you may know that I have a lot of Let's Get to Know interviews with many musicians. But next up, this is the first video interview of Let's Get to Know Demetra of Neutron Soltis. Hello everyone, this is Demi, singer of Sombria and now of Neutron Solstice and I'm really happy to be here for this interview for Pop Art Ave. So let's start it. So the first question is where I grew up? Well, I'm half Mexican and half Greek so I used to travel a lot and I grew up between these two countries. Um, I had the pleasure to, well, you know, enjoy different cultures from a young age. So that's that. I grew up between Mexico and Greece. So the second question is, what uh, is one of the first songs you remember liking as a kid? And I would definitely say that I grew up by listening, well, my first band that I used to listen to a lot when I was a child was Nightwish. And I grew up with it. So um, my 
favorite album of them is their first one, Angels Fall First, and the same song, Angels Fall First, from this album. So that one I would say it's my fave. So the third question is, what influenced me to get into art? Well, I am attracted to art in many ways. Since a young child I could say that I was very into music and painting because that's what I do as well, apart from uh, music. So I could say that definitely music has been an all-time companion of mine and I was attracted to opera music a lot since a very young age and definitely to the darker genres as well. So I can't say exactly what is what attracts me, it's hard to say, but definitely um, the whole atmosphere and well obviously the way it makes you feel. So the next question is at what age did you start playing or singing? Well I can say that around the age of 13 I started taking the piano and violin lessons. So I did that for a while and then changed into singing. That's what I do. Well, the next question is, if you could go back in time, what advice would you give to yourself after finishing school? Well, I don't know if I would give some certain advice because um, certainly the choices I've made has, have led me here now where I'm today and many things that I've done I wouldn't have done if I've done something different in the past. So I would say that I wouldn't change much because that's what I did and I had to learn. I mean, we all have to learn and, you know, choose wrongly and do mistakes and stuff. But what I would say, if I could have the possibility to give to myself an advice, to my younger self, it's that I should be more careful choosing some things and definitely be a bit more open-minded in some things, yeah. So the next question is, what are some of your favorite songs at the moment? Oh, that's hard. Um, I can't tell you a song. I can say that I'm very into doom metal and you will find me listening to Solo the Sun all the time. I can listen to all the time, literally. And theater of tragedy, this kind of stuff, I love it. So that's that. I wouldn't pick a song because, you know, every song it's for a certain moment. So uh, each moment is different. I wouldn't pick a song, sorry. <laughs> Do you listen to your own music? I do not listen to my own music. I would say that the only exceptions is when I practice it and when I have to go on stage, then then I would listen to my songs all day long till I get sick and tired of them. Which musician would you like to collaborate with? Well, that's an easy one. Tarja Turun and of course, <laughs> that would be a dream come true. Absolutely. I love her. What is one of your favorite memories so far in your music career? Oh well, I would say that every single time that I've been on stage is my favorite memory because that's just an indescribable feeling. I couldn't pick an individual memory because every single time is just the best. What advice would you give to someone that just started to get into the music business? Oh well, Hold tight, because you're in for a rough but beautiful ride. Um, you have to be very realistic of your expectations. You have to work hard. You have to do so many things. But if you really want to do it and achieve it, you'll do it. It's like everything else in life, right? So you need to be aware of the huge competition out there and you just have to outdo yourself sometimes it's just you know go over, over what you're able to do so yeah enjoy enjoy the ride enjoy it thank you so much for this interview i had a blast if you want to keep up with me you can follow my socials or visit my website dimidesan.com
Once again, thank you and see you soon.
to the show and i hope you're enjoying it so far don't forget you can check out my t public shop for pop art av and also the beat on the street merch including shirts stickers hoodies mugs and much more also i have added a donation section on my website at popartav.com where all donations and income from the merch sales in my shop go back to making the website and video series much better Coming up next is new music videos from Blind Cobra, Atomic Ghost, Silverhawk, and Pensacola Mist.
armored bulletproof glazing all around. 120 millimeter cannon on the driver's side. Transfer case has torque splitting. It'll seat 60 in five and a half seconds and pull high tens in the quarter. This thing will go to a brick wall.
Be sure to check out all the musicians you like on the show on social media and on all the other music platforms. Coming up next is a new segment with KZL, followed by an interview with Cat Temper. Hey guys, welcome to the first segment of the Merch Table with KZL. Uh, Corinne, how are you today? Great. How are you? Good. Good. Thanks for coming. Thanks for back. having me on again. Yeah, as you can see, we have some good merch on right now. Um, mm -hmm. Forgive me if I mispronounce my architrave shirt. I'm I think that's sure right. That's how you pronounce it. Love it. <laughs> it's like somebody drew that one by hand. Yeah, I believe. Um, I believe it is. I'm, I'm pretty sure. Which is really cool. It's one of my favorites. And then I see also you have a bending grid shirt on, which is awesome. Do bending grid crop top oh, for the awesome. summer? Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, he sent me all kinds of summer stuff, and that's that's what I got to show you today. That's really Talk. cool. Shall I bust that out now? Yeah, sure. I mean, I, I had their video on the um, the last episode, Love Arcade, which I love. Um, oh, yeah. Love the it's video. Got three. It's got Cool Nights Out, too. That's a good one. Yes. I think he, he released an EP, right? Is that what you said? Or... Mm hmm Yeah. That's, that's one of them. Yep. Self-titled EP. Oh, there there it is. Wow. Awesome. You got the, uh, the CD. And he's got... Uh, five tracks on here well two of them are remixes but love arcade activate and cool nights he's got a video for all of them and they all uh released on the same day so he signed it too because wow. <laughs> really cool. he's he's set me up for summer just to be totally bending gridded out of course we have the bag oh wow the bag no matter how many vinyls i buy at a concert i can fit them all in this bag without them getting destroyed that's really cool uh, aside from the uh crop top which I really like the the comic design on this. But he's also got like a regular tee. Okay. Regular graphic tee. And then and this this gets crazy because <laughs> uh, this is my first synthwave swimsuit. Oh, is that a wow? Yeah, I've never it's a one piece that swimsuit. Before. I haven't either. And flip flops, bending grid, flip flops. Really cool. Wow. I don't have flip flops either. I haven't asked him yet where he gets all his merch made, but I was, I was actually just about to ask that. I was wondering in my head because that's not my. Uh, I use T Public, and they definitely don't have that. No, Zazzle's a good one. Zazzle. Yeah. I got to check. Have all them. kinds of stuff. Bending grid visor. Oh wow. Good summer. I'll need it though. Very cool. And then an aluminum water bottle. Wow. Cool nights. That is cool. So, you'd be taking this to the gym. They say that uh, these aluminum bottles are better for you than the plastic bottles. So yeah, he set me up for summer big time. He just coming out of the gate there with just all the trappings, bending grid. That's awesome. Check out the self-titled EP. Yep. It's available on Bandcamp as we speak. Yes, I did, I did pick it up. I have the uh, the digital digital version. Right on. And um, like I mentioned, that the Love Arcade music video is awesome. It's probably one of my favorites mm -hmm. I've seen in a while. Speaking of the Love Arcade music video, I forgot to show you my best piece of merch from Bending Grid. The LA Gear High Tops born in the video. Oh my signed. gosh. <laughs> That yeah. is awesome. That is really cool. With a certificate of authenticity. Wow. 
Now he told me that everything that she wore in that video was vintage, like purchased secondhand, I could see made that. in the eighties. Yeah. And uh, between the shoes, I, I think the dress was like the most expensive part, but yeah, that was, that's just awesome. That, that he's able really to track cool. down every piece. I think when I um, I actually messaged them and I said, are you from Jersey? Because it seems like like the whole get up and everything was like from that time, from that. Kind of. From this area, like the hair, the everything. I'm sure it was, you know, everywhere. But it, you know, like the, the the accent, you know, everything in the in the video just reminded me of that. That was really cool. Now he's from South Carolina. I can't, uh, I don't know about the actress though. I heard it too. So she might've been Italian or something. Yeah, it's awesome. Really cool. Um, so aside from the shirt, Architrape shirt, I also have, hopefully this doesn't blur up too much, Josie Pace. Oh, Josie Pace nice. hat, which is one of my favorites. Um, the Josie Pace shirt as well, too. Oh, it's kind of going <laughs> blurring. Oh, nice. Mug shots. Yeah. This is from one of their videos as well. Um, definitely check out her album if you haven't yet. Uh, she had an album, debut album come out. Um, February, I believe, of this year. It's really good video. Uh, videos are awesome. She has a, a lot of videos, and also uh, the album is great too. Noxious. Um, another musician I have is L. This was from nice. her other <laughs> one of her tracks on her album as well too, which I actually played the music video on one of my episodes as well. I, I love that they like got right on top of it as soon as they came out with their debut. They had merch to sell. Sometimes you gotta wait for that. And artists get begged like can we come up with a shirt or poster or something we're going to tell everyone submissions i'm sure you have a lot of submissions out there I want to remind everyone if anyone has synthwave submissions oh yeah i am uh, <clears throat> i'm finally caught up with my submissions so i do need more so if you have a song a synthwave song synth pop cyberpunk chip tune and you want to get it heard on night ride fm send it to me at karen at night ride.fm awesome that's how you can get to me Mm -hmm. I'll put it right down. We'll get it on the air. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> and you have the Tuesday and Thursday show as well, right? Yeah, my Tuesday show is at 6 p.m. British summertime so that they can tune in. Mm -hmm. um, and then Thursdays at 6 p.m. Pacific time so the North American can tune in. It's the same show every week. Um, I play pretty much the same music for each time zone. So if you only tune in on Tuesdays or Thursdays, you're not going to miss out. So. Unless I'm doing an interview, I only do that once. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I noticed the chat's always uh, pumping. There's a lot of people always in the chat. It's really fun. Always yeah. a fun time. It's a, it's an old-fashioned IRC right there on nightride.fm. We also have a YouTube, so if you search nightride.fm on YouTube, we have a live chat there, too, live stream. In fact, we have one for each one of our channels. It's not just nightride.fm. We have uh, Wrecked. We have a chill synth. It's... it's because they don't like it when our interviews interrupt their like gaming or something. <laughs> they don't want talking. They complain about it. Like then go to one of our other channels. We've got four. It's fine. Yeah, guys. Any music videos? Feel free to send them over to me as well too. Uh, Beatstreetsub gmail dot com. You want to get on the radio? Um, can send it to Corinne. Okay, guys. So I guess we're gonna wrap up this segment. First segment, uh, showing off some of our merch from some a lot of awesome musicians in the scene. Um, I'll try to leave some links below as well, too. So if you want to check it out. Awesome. Thanks for having me again. Oh, of course. Thank you. Karen. Yeah, I'll bring more for next time.
Okay, guys, I'm here today with Cat Temper. Hello. Mike, how are you today? Thank you for Great. How are show. you? Oh, Great. thank you for having me on. I've been waiting, thrilled to talk to you. Oh, I appreciate it. It's awesome. Very cool. Uh, very cool to chat with you as well. Um, so the first question I always like to ask is, how would you describe your music to everybody? <laughs> this is probably the toughest question. Um, <laughs> My, I think it was uh, my friend Jeff, who runs the Laser Steel Records label, came up with Meow Wave <laughs> to okay. describe it, which I, I think uh, is perfect, though it really doesn't say anything. I'm, I'm synth wave adjacent, like on the fringes of it, I'd say, simply because I definitely have um, a lot of retro influences. I kind of mm -hmm. mix up uh the balance of that with each release um but it's kind of a quirky uh aggressive unpredictable sound uh sort of like a, a cat in your lap that <laughs> you're you're enjoying and petting and then suddenly you don't you don't know when it's just gonna bite or scratch you and you gotta you gotta <laughs> take the good with the bad i like that yeah it's very true. Okay. Unpredictable cats, right? <laughs> so um, where did you grow up? Um, I'm originally from Binghamton, New York, which is uh, Rod Serling's hometown from the Twilight Zone. Oh, wow. And uh, <laughs> yeah, I, it, you might not be surprised to hear that um, a lot of his episodes, his characters and settings are based on like weirdo characters and settings from the actual town so it was a very <laughs> very interesting and weird place to grow up um it had a thriving punk scene and a thriving polka scene and oh, wow. once in a while those <laughs> those worlds would cross and you'd get a band that would come out of the the middle of the venn diagram of those so my musical influences are uh, pretty eclectic just from living there. That's really funny. I, I thought you were being sarcastic for a second. No, it, totally. <laughs> yeah, there was also um, in the uh, mid to late 90s um, sort of a clown core movement. <laughs> this was before or right at the beginning of when Insane Clown Posse and similar bands were showing up. Yes, yep, I remember and that like those were the scariest bands to, like you know i i grew up going to the local vfw or shriners hall to go to local punk shows and uh, you know knew learned how to navigate the pit without getting anything broken but the clown core bands man you if you saw a clown band coming down the street you crossed the road and if anyone thinks I'm like making this part up, just look up um, stool featuring Crappy the Clown and you'll see some show videos from Binghamton and that, that probably right. shows you some of the, <laughs> the craziness that happened. <laughs> yeah, I definitely, I grew up you know, in Jersey uh, for the most part. Um, I've definitely heard about Binghamton as well too. And I'll be mentioned earlier about how I, how I have some experience with it. <laughs> East Coast represent. Yeah, yep, exactly. It's really cool. Um, so how, how did you originally get into music? At a, at a young age, or was it something you picked up? Yeah, definitely. Um, one of the cool things about living in Binghamton is, and was, there's a really good free-form college radio station, uh, WHRW 90.5 FM. Mm -hmm. um, I was a college DJ there for like five or six years oh, wow. beyond my college years. Um, and they just played everything. Like they broke up the time slots into loose genres, but then DJs were free to play whatever they felt like at the time. Um, and sometimes it get really experimental. Um, it, and you know, great alternative to normal AOR or soft rock or a polka radio. <laughs> um, so it, it was almost like tuning into 
sounds from another planet or another dimension sometimes it just it you know sometimes the djs didn't even play music it was just experimental noise oh, wow. uh, sound collage and that got me really interested in music and sound design from an early age um and i kind of gravitated towards tape experimentation and uh trying to make music on a cheap four track and cheap casio keyboards <laughs> that's awesome that's really I, I once had a yamaha i think i want to say early 2000 and then the best thing about it was it had a six track i want to say a six or eight track. What? I'm even sure yeah Oh my god! That's how I used to record some music. I don't. I don't do anything now. I should. I want to get back to, into it someday. But was it mention that? Was it cassette or was it some other kind of storage um, device? A Yamaha keyboard. I guess it was all digital. It oh, okay. All, went onto the keyboard itself. I, I, I always forget the model number because I looked it up recently, and it's selling literally like double the price oh. in, in bad condition. <laughs> too. It's in bad condition, and I see if it double the price. Do you have yours stored away somewhere? You, I, you know, I, I sold it like, an no. idiot. yeah, like, yeah, I, like, I've let plenty of those go too. thinking, you know, Yam oh, Yamaha will always have that. They'll always have the six track recording, blah, blah, blah. You know, the pitch sequencer, <sighs> uh, it's like all the things I used to like to play with. And if you see new ones now, maybe they are out there, but I don't see them like that. I've the never seen that. Oh, really? Yeah. <laughs> that was my one time, I, you know, guitar center. That was my one uh, pickup, oh. keyboard. Mm -hmm. I think it was a GX or I, I can't remember. I'll, I'll figure it out. Maybe I'll post it. Yeah, let day. me know. <laughs> let me know if you remember it. Send me a link because I'm always interested in like the keyboards and gear that was like sliding closer to the toy level rather than oh, okay. the pro level. Yes. Like I, I, I uh, have an attic full of like crappy, cheap toy thrift store keyboards that i'd like to integrate into my music in unexpected ways so oh, that's cool yeah, that's I, great those idea. are my favorites that's really cool so um your, your previous release was uh, a forbidden planet i believe yep. it is. yes okay what was it like um making that that album um well i like to um shift my tone and direction with each album. I'm really into concept albums from an early age, you know, all the prog rock bands that would put out uh, you know, whole audio worlds. And this one literally, you know, the planet universe theme going for an audio world. Um, it was very much influenced by like 70s, early 80s, sci-fi soundtracks and john carpenter vangelis type stuff r.i.p um and yeah i it kind of evolved as it went so it was like an adventure making it as much as it is listening to it hopefully yeah, yeah definitely get that vibe it's really cool track uh cool album i should say thank you yeah now your newest one is cat out of hell Yes. I love the uh, artwork, the cover art on that as well. Thank you. Yeah, that like the themes that you went have into pre-order today. Um, yep. And the cover art is by Alexi Rico, who I've been a fan of for a long time. He does um, a lot of album covers and commercial work. Um, there's a new Three Force album available on Bandcamp that he did a great cover for. And uh, obviously... <laughs> Um, my album titles and themes and song titles are puns. Usually I'm like classic albums and classic rock, mm -hmm. uh, bands and titles. This is a meatloaf inspired one. RIP again, unfortunately. Yeah. Um, so. yeah, all, all the, this the album title and the song titles are all meatloaf puns. And, uh, Alexi did sort of a tribute to the bat out of hell album cover mm -hmm. with the cat twist and he just totally nailed it that's awesome. this one is it definitely has more uh, <laughs> of my 80s headbanger hard rock influences awesome. um, yeah a little more <laughs> hair metal-ish than i'm used to doing really cool so at the time of um that we're recording this is may 23rd pre-orders are available on Bandcamp. i see the vinyl out there as well 
Um, yeah, the release show, day is uh, June 6th. June 6th, yeah. okay. I was just going to mention, we'll probably be airing this a little bit after, but awesome. we'll probably have some reviews. I think there are reviews out there already. Already I see on Bandcamp. Yeah, uh, I'm excited really- by that. I'm glad people are digging it already. Yeah, definitely awesome. I had a chance to listen to some, and the video is awesome as well, too. Uh, the music video. Yeah, I've got a friend. Uh, his name's Jim Ether, and he's uh, a really talented uh, multimedia artist. He dabbles in everything. And in the past few years during the pandemic, he's been teaching himself 3D computer animation with free tools like Blender. Oh, wow. And I just, I can't even believe like <laughs> what he's learned to do. He's, uh, he does some crazy experimentation. Um, he has all these short, you know, 30 second, one minute pieces on his own site and YouTube channel. And I said, Hey, would you uh, be interested in trying a whole full length four and a half minute video with characters and a story arc? And he's like, sure. And that ended up being about 10 times more work than I think (laughs) either of us anticipated. And uh, he just got that finished in time to promote the album. And I still can't believe like what he did. (laughs) Uh, He made a whole avatar out of my cat temper character, Mm -hmm. Um, a villain, some mouse bot drones that he fights a cool (laughs) car. (laughs) All the elements. I got to turn it into a TV series. Oh yeah, that'd be great. That'd be awesome. <laughs> so, is there any um, music you're currently listening to now? Let me pull up my band camp. I am always like adding to my collection, so yeah. it's like it's me. hard to keep up. I finally am like catching up on albums I bought in January. Yeah, and I hear that. Some of the latest stuff I'm getting, um, there's new Micromat scenes, singles. Um, mm-hmm. I recently discovered uh, Romero synth and Von Hans, oh, some okay, great yes. synthwave stuff. Uh, Vampire has been putting out some awesome uh, goth industrial tinge singles with some great yeah. singers and equally great videos. Yeah. Um, Liquid Modern has been putting out some great singles. Yeah. Yep. Um, let me see here. <laughs> yeah. I, I could go on for like an hour just promoting all the great electronic peers that I have in the scene. So it's, um, it sounds like, it almost sounds like you're like me, like Bandcamp is, is my source. It's and basically I, I don't really listen to any mainstream at all anymore. Seriously. <laughs> yeah. It, like okay, discovering Bandcamp a few years ago, is the closest thing to the feel of going to a record store back in the eighties and nineties. Like Mm -hmm. you can just browse, find really unexpected stuff um, that you see who bought what and you follow their collection. It's like getting advice from someone else in a store or the the record store owner. And I, I love that you can listen to some tracks or a whole release before you choose to buy something and yes i agree 100%. yeah it's not my wallet isn't too happy about it but <laughs> <laughs> it's really like impacted my record collection as well that's really cool yeah i'm pretty much the same way as well since i came on Bandcamp, so much good stuff out there it's dangerous it's like, yeah <laughs> yeah <laughs> So I, I obviously I found you on um, Bandcamp. Um, where else can we find your music and social media? Um, I am on Instagram and Twitter as Cat Temper Meow as one word. Okay. Um, and I am on CatTemper.com is my main hub, and that has links to uh, my Facebook and YouTube, Bandcamp, and everything. Um, if you do go to cattemper.bandcamp.com, all my links are in the right-hand rail as well. Okay, perfect. I'll also include them in the video description Thank you. of this as well, too. You can check it out. So before we wrap up, um, do you have any announcements, anything else planned uh, for the rest of 2022? Well, I should have 
the vinyl for Cat Out of Hell uh, by the time this airs, hopefully, you know, mm -hmm. probably like everyone knows, the vinyl industry has been in the pits the past couple of years due to <laughs> a, lot of delays. A, a ton of events. Yeah. Um, and I'm also uh, putting the finishing touches on another album that'll come out uh, later this year, awesome. a few months. Um, and that is another theme um, that I haven't explored yet that I'm pretty excited about. Oh, very cool. That's always good. Good to hear. Okay, Mike, um, again, I want to say thank you for joining us on The Beat on the Street. Um, right now, I'm going to play one of your tracks from the new album as well, too. Woo! Wow. Thank you, Michael. I'm so excited to be involved and have a good summer.
Okay, guys, it's about that time to wrap up another show. Thank you for all of your support watching the show, as well as my other videos from the Ford Sector and Let's Talk Music. Don't forget you can find me on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. I'll leave links in the video description box so you can find me and as well as all other musicians as well. Again, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.